It is Monday, the 6th of June, 2022, and it is 2.25 p.m. Australian time. This place used to be a dodgy motel here in Asheville, Sydney. And then a sodomite, I repeat, a sodomite bought it and made a contract with Department of Housing and gets paid a lot of Australian tax dollars from the department to house women who have escaped domestic violence issues or who are homeless and some of the rooms are pet friendly here. Now we've been here for a week and I want to tell you something. A few days ago, I heard one of the um, staff members talk to someone, look, look how disgusting this room was. We had to put our own sheets on and our own blanket. Anyway, um, I heard her talking about God to someone and I walked to her and I said, oh, God bless you. And um, she looked at me and I said, do you believe in God? She goes, oh, I believe in a higher power, this something. Then she started sprouting new age Luciferian garbage. And I politely told her that Jesus is God and that he loves her very, very much and all that good stuff. I said, Jesus bless you. Have a beautiful day. Ever since then, she was very nasty to me. Anytime I asked her for towels or toilet paper, she told me to go away. She can't help me. And um, and just, just nasty. I would turn her face to the side so she wouldn't face me for some weird reason. And every time she'd walk past me, she'd start cackling like a witch and, and grumbling things under her breath. And I'd say, good morning, God bless you. And she would turn her head and just say something nasty and walk off, which was very unprofessional. Um... She went and said something to the owner in the, mo in the Monday morning staff, which even turned them more against me, and as I told you what the owner is. So he found out that I'm a Christian. And I'll tell you what, ever since these people here realised and found out that I'm a Christian and I love Jesus and that I believe that Jesus is God, and I say, God bless you, good morning, Jesus bless you, God, good night, God bless you. It triggered them. It made them so, so angry. They just started picking holes in me, wouldn't wouldn't give me anything, wouldn't do anything for me. And they'd start accusing me of not doing what was I was supposed to do. Um, I gave a, a young lady a lift from here. She was in a domestic violence situation. She finally got a place in the city. She asked me if I could drive her to go sign her lease and pick up her keys. I took her there, took her to a place, you know, bought a breakfast, was really kind, said, God bless you. You know, they're all marked here, every single one of them, they're all dark. So I expect that. And while I was driving, like, I had to ring this um, place up that helps me, helps me get, like, a rental bond and with housing and stuff. I was on hold, you know, elevated music for about an hour and 20 minutes until someone finally answered. And then I was on the phone to this guy. He was really rude to me even scoffed at me a few times, but you know, it is what it is, they're marked. For about another hour while we're doing this application over the phone. And he says, now you've got to pick a rental zone where you want to live. I'm not a GPS. You know, I'm not a map. I'm not a street directory. I don't know all the areas in New, the whole state of New South Wales, which has Department of Housing allocations of what the numbers are. And he goes, we well, got to pick where you want to live. I said, I don't know where I want to live. I've got all this stuff going through my head and you're forcing me to do this, this paperwork, that paperwork, fill this in, go look up this, go do that, go do this, go do that. There's a monitoring spirit there. One of them that work for them keeps walking up and down trying to listen to what I'm saying. I don't care. Um, and it's doing my head in. This is all new to me. So... <clears throat> Okay, my mind. So when I get back, I ask the guy, to, the, the owner, to open the gate to let the car in. And he was like going like this to me, like, come here. He wanted me to go in the office and he goes, You can't stay here another night before because you didn't do your. your, your here he comes. Your, he's coming now. Your rent start bond. And I said, Yes, I did. He goes, No, you didn't. We didn't get anything. And I said, Listen, look at the paperwork here. I've got the reference number. Please punch in the reference number and you'll see I've done the whole thing. I was on the phone for about two and a half hours. And then he goes, 
He gave me some weird name, ladies and niggas. She called you three times and you were told three times this morning to send us a bank statement so we can get paid for you to extend your stay here. I said, no one called me. She goes, yes, she did. She said she told you three times. I said, no, I was on the phone for about two and a half hours. I said, I'll show you my phone log. No one called me. And he um, said that she did call me and she did tell me three times to give the bank statement. I said, I'm telling you, no one called me, no one told me. I said, someone told me I could have done it in two minutes because I got phone banking. And he goes, well, pack your things and leave. I said, what? He goes, pack your things, get out, leave. And I said, I said, I've got type 1 diabetes. I got bladder incontinence from botched surgery. My blood sugar is high. I got a small car. I got heaps of bags. I got, and I got a sick old dog. I got nowhere to go, nowhere to stay. And he goes, I don't care. Pack your stuff now. I said, why? He goes, because you didn't give your bank statement. I said, no one told me. He would not listen to me. I said, do you have a problem with me being a Christian ever since I've been saying God bless you? And he wouldn't say anything. He goes, just pack your stuff now. And um, yeah, I've packed it all, chucked it in the car. And someone from housing called me. And it was that lady that supposedly talked to me three times. And I said, did you call me this morning? She goes, no. I said, they're kicking me out because they're saying that you told them you called me three times this morning and told me to give a bank statement. She goes, no, I didn't. I said, hang on. I've got you on speak. I'm going to go to walk to the office now. You're going to speak to this guy, Justin, the owner, and you're going to tell him with your own mouth that you never called me. And she told him. She goes, no, I never spoke to her. It wasn't her. She spoke to one of the staff members there, rang here, the officer, and told them to tell me. And do you know what? The person who took that call didn't bother to tell me. She saw me in the morning before I left, and she saw me in the afternoon when I come back. She never told me at all. So they're all lying. <laughs> and um, he still wants me to go. And then um, someone else from housing called me and said, we'll try and find you, like, emergency accommodation for you and your dog. That's the guy there. He's a sodomite. He hates Jesus. This man hates Jesus and he's marked. I rebuke him in Jesus' name. I rebuke him in Jesus' name. I feel sorry for him. But it is what it is. And then housing called me and they said, uh, we can't extend your night. We can't help you anywhere else because you've been abusive to staff. I said, how have I been abusive? They said that you've been abusive to them. I said, did they tell you what kind of abuse I gave them or what abusive words I said or what I did? He goes, look, I'm not going to argue. I said, please, they're accusing me of something very serious. He said, he's putting me, on the, me and my dog on the streets in winter. And he couldn't tell me what they said that I did or what they accused me of. They just said that I'm being abusive. How am I being abusive when I'm trying to tell them nobody called me this morning asking for a bank statement, that they're lying? How's that abusive? You know what? I told that man before when he come up and he banged on the door and I was actually on the phone, phone to housing and he, and he thought I wasn't doing anything. I said, here, here, put you on a loudspeaker, speak to the lady now so you know I'm talking to them. And um, as he was being nasty, he said, pack your things and go, get out. I said, do you know what the Bible says about the end days? That the love of many will wax cold and you're showing it right now. You're fulfilling prophecy. It burned him so bad that he yelled at me, get out. Wow. That's just rubbish in there. Oh, my Lola. Lola. We'll go sleep in the car. It's okay. Jesus will help us. Jesus will lead us somewhere, okay? Yeah. So I just want to witness to you all how these marked ones are bearing false witness. They're lying. The demons in them see the holy light in us and they see that we are human and we are created in God's image. Our image has not been altered into the image of, the, of Satan. That's what the mark does to them, all of them. They're all in Satan's image and they're going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and maybe this was meant to happen to get us out of here. Before they get even worse when they turn on the five zap zap. <sighs> Look, I'll show you. I've had to throw a lot of stuff out because it just won't fit. See? It's all packed. 
I love you all in Jesus' glorious name, and I'll keep you updated. All I ask for is prayers. Pray for us in Jesus' name. Pray for us in Jesus' name. I love you all. Bye-bye. Lola.